Malcolm Watts began to uh, sit up and take notice. So here in SNCC, it became first thought, right, Malcolm X is having an effect where you don't even think he's having an effect, so people began to look closer. Of course, the closer they looked to Malcolm X, the quicker they got hooked on Malcolm X. Early in 1965, SNCC and Dr. Martin Luther King joined forces for a voting rights campaign in Selma, Alabama. When SNCC invited Malcolm X to speak in Selma, he reaffirmed his willingness to support other civil rights leaders. And I think that the people in this part of the world would do well to listen to Dr. Martin Luther King and give him what he's asking for and give it to him fast before some other factions come along and try to do it another way. What he's asking for is the right. That's the, the ballot. And if he can't get it the way he's trying to get it, then it's going to be got one way or the other. On February 14th, 1965, Malcolm X's home was bombed as he and his family slept inside. Had you had any threats uh, of anything like this? I uh, had any threats? That's all I get is threats. I get uh, not less than six or seven threatening uh, phone calls every day. And the phone rang, and I picked it up. It was a morning, and a Saturday morning, as I recall. And this voice came on and asked uh, and started talking. And I'm wondering, who is it? I didn't understand. I didn't recognize the voice. And finally, something he said made me realize with a great shock, my shock, that was Malcolm X. And for the first time in our whole acquaintance of years, I really didn't, un didn't perceive who he was. The thing was, he was under such pressure that it was as if it had constricted his vocal cords. He just felt, I guess, as near desperate. 